Hello, I'm Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder of RackN, and this is a short explanation of how digital rebar enables end-to-end -end infrastructure pipelines. What we have found through working with customers is that this system's approach to doing infrastructure automation completely changes how we think of infrastructure and automation. It transforms the outcomes for people in powerful, remarkable ways. Let me walk you through how this works in digital rebar. It all starts at the center with digital rebar, but the goal here is not just to use digital rebar, but to actually create a cycle of improvement, a continuous feedback loop in which we're actually feeding forward the learnings that we have from one customer, one project, one team, one site into the next. That reuse is absolutely critical. And all of that starts with our infrastructure is code approach, where we literally bring a deep library of working and proven automation into every account. And one of the things to realize is that RackN reuses automation. And that level of reuse and the place where our automation is able to be maintained and backported and used throughout all of our customer base quickly and easy dramatically changes the ROI. It reduces the toil, makes everybody's job easier. It's the core of everything we do in building infrastructure as code and end-to-end -end pipelines. That allows us to have a consistent provisioning approach that works on cloud, edge, bare metal, any infrastructure type. Provisioning is core of what we do, but is only part of the story. Because once you've provisioned a system, you need to flow smoothly without any interruption, a seamless integration between the provisioning stage and the configuration stages. That has to be able to work regardless of which tool you're using or how the system is being put together or built, whether it's pixie booting with bare metal, Terraform with cloud, or a bunch of scripts that you had already working and wanted to port into your environment. From there, we have to be able to switch into operational mode, out of workflow and into work orders to allow the node to be patched, updated, continuously checked, monitored, commissioned, and reviewed. That essential component of this end-to-end -end pipeline allows us to not just do provisioning and setup, but actually run and maintain. As part of that, it's absolutely critical to think of us being able to coordinate operations between machines, between nodes, between storage and switches and networking. Interacting between these systems is really what everybody needs to do. Just provisioning a system or building a cluster is not enough. We actually need to have a continuous loop where we operate and maintain those infrastructures as a group and provide a life cycle for the cluster, for the group of infrastructure, completely outside the individual nodes or components of that infrastructure. That concept alone is incredibly powerful for being able to give people a real API to work at a higher abstraction level. So developers can think about clusters of systems rather than having to worry about the individual machines. The people who, like operators or SREs who are worried about individual machines can focus and uh, work on that component of their infrastructure and fit it into a larger whole seamlessly. And once you have those pieces working, then we can start looking at real orchestration. How do we take user actions, manual controls, and put them into the system in a coherent way? Even more importantly, how do we hook this into automated events or timers or system triggers, webhooks that are happening external to the flow of control? While users and user control is important, what we're really aiming for is to be able to hook these infrastructure pipelines together into other systems, whether it be a GitLab, GitHub trigger with a webhook, what we would call GitOps, or a CICD pipeline where you're actually triggering based on having new code available, new artifacts or new containers. The keys in all of these systems is that we're actually able to hook them together smoothly. That's what makes this into a pipeline. The pipeline doesn't start and end with digital rebar. It actually starts and ends with actions within the business and they have to ultimately be tied into business activities whether they're users customers operators uh, sizing clusters uh, decommissioning recommissioning or adding to infrastructure ultimately our job here in an end-to-end -end infrastructure pipeline is to create business focused infrastructure and that is ultimately the value of digital rebar
I hope this was helpful. Please take a little bit of time and try this for yourself. Try, try some of our tutorials or training exercises and see how you can start to build your own infrastructure pipelines. You don't have to have all of the pieces working on day one. The best approach is to actually start with one or two adjacent operations and then start building your full pipeline gradually. Thanks a lot, and I hope you'll enjoy our other videos. Thanks.